Due Process, winner of 22 regional Emmy Awards, including the 2012 and 2013 Mid-Atlantic Emmys for Outstanding Discussion Series. Due Process is a presentation of Rutgers School of Law Newark and the Edward J. Blaustein School of Planning and Public Policy. Studio facilities provided by the Rutgers ITV Studio, Division of Continuing Studies. I declare Joseph and Orville to be lawful spouses in the state of New Jersey. It took more than a decade of court fights, but marriage equality had come to New Jersey. A judge's ruling, the Supreme Court's refusal to stay her decision, and the governor's agreement to drop his appeal. All that, what it means and what's next. And in accordance with the authority vested in me by the state of New Jersey, I now pronounce you married! Right now on Due Process. Major funding for Due Process provided by the Fund for New Jersey, supporting informed citizens for an effective democracy. Additional funding from Genova Burns. Now there are 14. With a ruling by a superior court judge, the acquiescence of the state Supreme Court, the backing down of a governor, New Jersey became the 14th state to make it legal. And scores of couples have already said, I do. I'm Raymond Brown. And I'm Sandra King, and we're talking, of course, about same-sex marriage. With the lawyer who won the final case, an opponent who's dismayed at the ruling. Now off. A former governor who signed a domestic partnership bill, first step on New Jersey's long road to gay marriage. Two years before the state court first stepped in with the landmark case that started it all. Our first case this morning is Lewis v. Harris. The case that led to the state Supreme Court ruling granting full and equal rights to same-sex couples. We want our daughters to know that their family will be treated equally, that their family will be treated fairly. Based on a suit filed by seven gay couples who demanded a full equality. After today and for the last 31 years, I want to get married to Cindy and today I'm hopeful it's going to happen. And just before Deborah Poritz left the bench, the court said yes to equal treatment. Please be seated. The chief justice insisting that meant marriage, but the majority ruling that it could be called something else, and the legislature settling on civil unions. It was supposed to be the same benefits as marriage, but not call marriage. Right. And that's where the problem stands. Tom Walton and Merman Davis did have a wedding years earlier, but under New Jersey law, it had no legal weight. It was important to us for our kids to show them that we were making a commitment together. To show our families that this is who we are. But that was before last June, when the U.S. Supreme Court struck down DOMA, the so-called Defense of Marriage Act. Gay rights advocates said that changed everything. It is the state that has denied our clients the right to marry. It is the state that says you can only enter into civil unions. And so, therefore, it is the state that is the cause, the source, the genesis of this problem. And it is that state action that we're seeking to redress. With New Jersey on record as granting full equality and no further federal restriction in the way, Larry Lussberg told a Superior Court judge the state couldn't legally stand in the way of full access to federal spousal benefits from income tax to Social Security. The origin of the problem here resides clearly with the state, which has created this separate, and we say unequal, and clearly after Windsor unequal system, where different sex couples can marry and same sex couples cannot. That is the origin of the problem. Judge Mary Jacobson agreed. Well, we were ecstatic. 
We were so excited to hear finally someone say that we would be allowed to get married. We've been in this for so long, it was, it was hard to believe that it might really happen. And the Christie administration, as expected, appealed. But once the state Supreme Court refused to grant a stay, opening the gates for a flood of same-sex marriages, including this mass wedding in Maplewood, the governor withdrew his appeal. I now pronounce you married! And we looked back on the couples we'd met over 17 years following the struggle. If I had received the health benefits in 92 when we first requested it, uh, I feel strongly that Steve would still be alive today. Bill Mayo, who lost his money, his house, and his 18-year companion to AIDS because he couldn't share health benefits with his partner. You can take those jars to the recycling. The reverends Mark Lewis and Dennis Winslow, Episcopal priests who had told us they had... Serious hopes that this court will say this is the right thing and we want it for New Jersey. But ultimately left the state and married in New York. Yeah, thank you, Dennis. <laughs> Sarah and Sue Lael who could not understand why they'd be allowed to adopt three children. But then not be able to marry each other. And Maureen Killian and Cindy Menigan, life partners since college, mothers of two, who had told us 11 years ago. We're class moms, soccer coaches. We're just like everybody else, but we just don't have the same rights and protections that the straight couples have. We're saying, it's time. And their time came just a few days ago when Cindy and Maureen, their two children in attendance, finally got married after waiting nearly 40 years. For Larry Lustberg, it was something of a personal triumph. He, after all, had won the case. For former Governor Jim McGreevy, it was personal, too, more than just a matter of public policy. But for Demetrius Stratus, the legalization of same-sex marriage was a bitter disappointment. Welcome to you all. Thanks, Demetrius, is this the end of gay marriage as a public policy and legal controversy in New Jersey? No, I think it's going to continue to be a, a, a controversy in the following sense. We now have a Supreme Court decision which denied a stay. Now it's going to go back to the legislature, and I guess they're going to decide whether they want to override the veto or whether or not they're going to enact a new law. But we have another conflict that's going to come up, and that is pastors. You deal with municipal court judges now who have a right of conscience to decide, hey, I have sincerely held religious beliefs and I don't necessarily want to give a same-sex well, marriage. Now, you've articulated three different paths. But the one I want to start with is the last one, which is you're suggesting civil disobedience on the part of people who might otherwise be compelled if they're public servants to follow the law. Well, if a new law is enacted, then there has to be exemptions carved out because we're going to have a conflict between the freedom of religion, free exercise clause, and free speech clauses that are going to come into conflict, conflict with that law. But, Demetrius, before we get to the exemptions that you're saying have to come. Let's first deal with the, the bigger question. Is your fight against same-sex marriage in New Jersey lost? I don't think so. I don't think so, and for the following reason, I think the civil union law is crystal clear. It gives all the rights and benefits that a heterosexual has, couple has, and it gives it to same-sex couples. I don't know why the law needs to be changed, and the stay from the Supreme Court, I think, was premature because the Supreme Court is supposed to give a presumption of validity to existing laws, the civil union law and the marriage laws. Larry's shaking his head. The, look, Jim wants to get the, in. The, why don't, Demetrius, with all due respect, why don't you have civil unions for opposite sex couples and give us marriage and we'll call it a draw? I mean, if there's no ostensible, there's no difference, then, then why not grant us equality in the most meaningful sense in the eyes of the law? Because you do have equality. The, well, the then, then, then I mean, you, 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 it's the, different. Then, then you're playing a word game. It's yeah. either equality or it's not. And if it's equality, it's marriage. Except you're seeking to redefine an institution that's been there for 2,000 years. Marriage is between a man and a woman. Now, you want to call a union between two men something different, though. It is different. There's nothing you can do to change that. It's a union between two men and a union between a man and a woman. They are different. But, Larry, so, let, me, let me bring you back to viewers who might not have followed all the nuances. Um, when the Supreme Court denied a stay, they could have done it in one line. They have a 20-page opinion. Does that have no meaning in terms of what the state must do going forward and what the meaningful options are for the future? 
we have a win. I mean, the, this, it's really interesting to hear this debate because it acts as if the case wasn't decided. The case was decided. The trial court has ruled, the state initially appealed it, and after an extremely exhaustive, careful, and thorough discussion of it by our highest court, the governor and the state withdrew its appeal. The law of the land is clear. Mr. Stratus's uh, objections notwithstanding, the fact is that civil union does not provide all of the rights of marriage, and the courts have so held. And more than that, in so holding, the courts have said that inequality violates the Constitution. In doing that, the court really aligned itself with what everybody thinks anyway. I mean, this was a this was Can a I tough. Can I take you out of yeah. your partisan stance for a minute? Yep. Yeah. Because as an advocate, you got to be partisan. Is there any room for the legislature to act short of amending the Constitution in order to go back a step uh, in terms of the arguments that Demetrius is making? Well, the the I, th I think the answer to that is no. Um, what the Supreme Court ruling engendered, um, but really more what Judge Jacobson's lower court mm -hmm. ruling engendered that the Supreme Court refused to stay, was that inequality cannot be the law of the land, and the difference between civil unions and marriage was one that has legal significance. People in marriages get all of the benefits that, of, of, uh, uh, that we all get. People in civil unions got a fraction of them. And that difference was simply impossible to comprehend, impossible to accept. That's what the court said. That's the law of the land. There cannot be a law that would enshrine inequality in the way that the old civil union law did. But Jim, when the governor pulls back and says, okay, I'm not going to continue to appeal this, it stops the state Supreme Court process of actually going through a full vetting of the issue and coming out with a different kind of opinion than what they did with the stay. Similar, but not exactly the same. Does it leave the door open for Christie, people who follow him, people like Demetrius, to come back and say, this thing isn't totally decided, um, let's, let's go at it again? I, I think, and I would defer to, to Larry um, and, and to Lambda. I mean, I think the issue is decided in New Jersey, it's over. That Discrimination, invidious discrimination, is not going to be tolerated. Uh, it's fundamentally it's inequality, and the court has spoken clearly. And so, you know, I, I look at Demetrius and I respect his opinions, but whether it's born out of faith or tradition, that can't be a reason for sustaining or maintaining inequality. If it's based on race, if it's based on gender, if it's based on sexual orientation, America is better than that. And I'm not saying that if you don't want to bury someone because of a religious reason, if you don't want to marry somebody in a church for a religious reason, mazel tov, that's your decision. But in terms of the state, the state issues birth certificates, the state issues death certificates, the state issues marriage certificates, and people ought to be accorded the same basic fundamental rights. Which is, let me see if I can get to the bottom line of your position, because there are a lot of nuances here. Yes. You've had the United States Supreme Court and our state Supreme Court go pretty far on this issue. You've had the governor, at least for the moment, acquiesce pretty clearly. What is the drive to continue to fight on this issue, especially when it's at least framed by much of society as a question of equality? What's the, what's the key driving principle against this current status? Well, to maintain that marriage is between a man and a woman. That's what we're seeking to preserve and protect. And we understand and respect the fact that maybe same-sex couples are deserve the same rights as a union between a man and a woman. And they've been given those same rights under the Civil Union Act. Now, to say that we're going to change and redefine marriage, because that's the only way that we can be treated equally, I don't agree with that but position. Demetrius, let me interrupt you, because um, I suspect that Larry's right, and you're fighting a battle that's probably already been lost. What would you say about the governor's position in calling off the appeal? He was on your side. Wouldn't you have had him continue with the appeal? I would have liked to have had and what do you think his motivation was? I, I think basically he saw the writing on the wall. That, that Supreme Court decision uh, denying the stay was effectively their decision on the appeal if it went to before the Supreme Court. Now, I don't agree with the decision before the Supreme Court because on a motion for a stay, the standard is much different. So I think they should not have denied the stay. But once the governor saw what their decision uh, was, he essentially saw the writing on the wall. But if he said, called you and said, Demetrius, what do I do now, what would you have said? I wish he would have taken it off. Absolutely. 
Jim, I know you're out of politics, but I know you think about it, too. Does this shape up as portending some really um, savage fights about future Supreme Court nominations in the state? Or do you think the tide has receded and there's not even a serious movement ahead to try to reconfigure this court? You know, I, I, Given the positions yeah, the current governor has taken about the court. You know, I, I appreciate both Larry's perspective and, and Demetrius's and the sincerity. And, and it pains me because I, I respect the sincerity of Demetrius's position, but it's almost arguing separate but equal ought to be an applicable standard of the law. Different but equal. Okay, but it, the, the point is, it, there's, there's a frustration, I think two points I'd like to make, that why is it that we can continue to engage in prejudice against the LGBT community, and somehow that's permissible when it violates the most basic precepts of equality in this country. And secondly, I think the country has moved inexorably in the direction of recognizing LGBT rights, and particularly among the young. I mean, it's, it's not going to be too long when Demetrius, Larry, and Jim are a part of the mortal earth. Uh, the youth of this country overwhelmingly support and recognize the importance of LGBT equality. So I think the issue is almost by the boards, and I think the governor did what was prudent insofar as the Supreme Court ultimately would have ruled very much in the, the same way, and the governor did not want to take up a gratuitous appeal. You supported, Jim, domestic partners. You did not go so far as to say yes to gay marriage when you were governor. We, we barely got <laughs> domestic partnership through with the Democratic legislature. But you could say you had the bully pulpit. You didn't take advantage of it to say we need full equality for all people. Sure. Do you regret that now? Oh, sure. I mean, part of it was I was wrestling with my own demons and my own identification as, as a gay man. Um, but there was also a part of me that clearly knew that both by virtue of the stories that were shared with me by partners at bedsides, partners that were asked to leave hospital rooms, that this was, this violated among the most basic of understanding of who we are as a people. And at that time, domestic partners was as much as you could oh, have gotten? Oh, my gosh. And I ought to give credit to Jamie Foxx, my chief of staff, I think, who broke arms uh, to get the bill passed. But it, it, it was difficult. And to, to see how much, I mean, America has changed in... 11 years, 10 years, is, is remarkable. So I, I think, you know, we're moving in that direction, and I don't think there's a reversal in our near history. I almost got Jim to answer my question, but let me try, Larry, with you. <laughs> Sorry, Ray. It's okay. We have a governor who, is, uh, who has, as another point of contention, believed that it's okay to change the configuration of this court, contrary to what some say is a tradition in the state. So that's mm -hmm. one issue in terms of specific issues he cares about. Mm -hmm. There's a rumor abroad that he might have national political ambitions. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that we may have future fights in the state over the court centered around this issue, or do you think that, that the that the issue is so completely resolved that it's not likely to resurface in that arena. Now, I don't think, I, I think there will, without question, be additional fights about the future of this court. Uh, part of the governor's view is that the court has been too activist. In my opinion, in this and many other cases, the court is simply following the law, not making it in any regard. But with regard to this particular issue, I, I, I just think it's over. And I think it's over for two reasons. Number one, the victory that we had was so resounding. When you read Judge Jacobson's opinion, and when you read the Supreme Court's opinion on the stay, which was not just motion for a stay denied, it was a 20-page opinion that, that, that examined carefully each of the state's arguments and completely rejected them. And unanimous. And it was a unanimous opinion, including uh, uh, those justices who had been appointed by this governor. I, I just think that this issue is over, and it's over. I mean, we can take all the credit for this great legal fight, and you know what what we did and what Lambda did is is great, and you know I admire um, the tenacity of all the people who've been involved in this litigation, and especially the plaintiffs. But it it would be wrong to. To, to not think about this in terms of what's going on in society as a whole. Uh, the governor is quite right. Um, this is a different world than the one that he was um, facing when, he, when uh, leaving aside his demons, um, when, when he was thinking about what the right policy ought to have been in those days. Um, you know, l let me just add in that regard, the first time around, one of the arguments that the state made was that New Jersey should not have same-sex marriage because it would have put it out of conformity with all the other states. Well, in your open today, you correctly pointed out that there's now four 14 states that do have marriage. So it is the increasing, increasingly the social consensus, and that's something that affects courts, legislatures, governors, 
and um, and 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 ought to be a driver of public policy. It might be over for the for the law here in New Jersey, but I suspect it's not entirely over for Chris Christie, who we all have heard have has some um, uh, national aspirations. Do you think this will come back to haunt him? Will the right punish him for not having gone ahead as Demetrius says he should have and fought the appeal? You know, the sounds from a Democrat. I hope Chris Christie becomes the Republican candidate for governor because when you look at the alternative in terms of the Tea Party, you mean for president? For, for, for president, for thank you, for for president. It, it's frightening where the Tea Party is, and I think the governor represents a rational alternative that that. As Americans, we should want to strengthen parties. And I think the governor, by not pursuing the appeal, made a rational, thoughtful, inevitable decision. And if I can, Sandy, just before I came here, it was in Jersey City Hall, Mayor Fuller presided over a gay marriage of, of two women that had been with each other for 24 years. And it was, it was a complete and total expression of love. And, you know, the conservative pundit, Andrew Sullivan, my dear friend, who happens to be gay and Roman Catholic, talks about gay marriage actually emboldening the institution of marriage, that people understand the significance. So what I would just suspect, not only to people on the left and the center, but on to the right, to understand gay marriage in the sense of what this institution does and what people actually who want to engage in it actually strengthens the overall notion of responsible legal commitment. Demetrius, let me come back to you, but this time maybe to have you read some tea leaves. That's not the tea party, but tea leaves, okay. Um, I do some human rights work around the world, and around the world people refer to lbgt in something. That is, the sea change in American public opinion, and in New Jersey over, say, the last decade. Does, as you look at the change in American opinion and the demographic changes that Jim talked about, does that leave you optimistic that there's any place to really stand given the principal position that you take? Stand with what? With in the, terms of whether there's a, support, you're sending, taking a position that has significantly diminishing support year by year and whether that makes a strategic difference. I think it's still important to maintain marriage between a man and a woman. I think but for our children. But is there support children, for that position? Is I, I think there is. I, but I, do you see it diminishing, or is that only in the eyes of advocates? Because it seems to be that there is a sea change, certainly in the United States. And certainly uh, in the church, right. within the Christian church, within, you know, among Reformed, the conservative Jews. I, I think there's a sea change to say that, you know, the prism of the first century is, is not the prism which we look at moral issues no, I think the principle sometimes is different, but in strategic terms, do you see a sea change, and what does that mean for you if you see it? I, I certainly see more rights are being given to same-sex couples. Certainly that we have the civil unions law, and now these opinions, and even uh, the issue with Windsor, and all uh, the changing makeup of the courts, and more states are enacting equality laws. Uh, I certainly see the, uh, the sea changing, if you will. Um, I still it's, feel so important that it's so important to maintain and preserve marriage between a man and a woman for the sake of our children, for the sake of, you know, procreation in general. I mean, marriage is between a man and a woman for natural reasons. Uh, two men cannot procreate. Uh, you know, life would end if it was left, uh, you know, to civil unions. And, and most marriages would end if it were only about procreation. The problem is we can't live in a world and say, okay, here's an exception of, you know, a, a, a widow or the exception of divorced couples. This is natural law. It's between a man and a woman so that we can be fruitful and multiply on the earth. Let me That's end not bringing this here. back to the practical politics because I'm fascinated by how this is going to play out for Chris Christie. Demetrius, you perhaps are the, the most interesting person to mm -hmm. ask because you're closer to the position of the people who might say, we're going to get you for not having stood up for us. I, 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 you know, I said that earlier. I understand his position. When he saw the writing will of the law... Will he pay the price? I don't know. I don't know. Time will tell on that issue. I don't know. Uh, I'm certainly disappointed that he didn't fight the fight and take it up to the Supreme Court. Uh, you know, they had arguments scheduled in January. Who With knows what could have 30 happened? 30 seconds, Larry. Do you think Chris Christie's going to pay a price in his national I ambitions? Look, I can't speak for the voters who are going to vote in the South Carolina primary. How about Iowa? Um, <laughs> but l let me just say, I mean, it, what, what he did here made all the sense in the world. He looked at the decision, and like a good lawyer would, and he's surrounded by good lawyers, he made the right decision, not just reading the tea leaves, but understanding and the Larry, law. the conversation will continue, but we are out of time. So we thank our guests. Larry Lussberg, Demetrio Stratus, and Jim McGreevy. Thanks. We thank all of you for watching, and we'd like to know what you think. 
So stop by our Facebook page at facebook.com slash TV. And check out our pictures from the 2013 Mid-Atlantic Emmys, where Due Process, again, won top honors as outstanding talk series. It brought our total number to a record 22. For Sandy, associate producer Tanya Ivanova, and all of us here, I'm Raymond Brown. Thanks for watching. to be your lawfully wedded spouse, to love and to honor him in sickness and in health, in good times and in bad, until death do you part. Absolutely. <laughs> do you, Orville, take Joseph to be your lawfully wedded spouse, to love and honor him in sickness and in health, in good times and in bad, until death do you part? I now, by the power vested in me, thank God, by the state of New Jersey, it's about time, I declare Joseph and Orville to be lawful spouses in the state of New Jersey. You may kiss your spouse. Want even more insight on law and justice? Become a fan of Due Process on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter and watch us on demand on YouTube.